So many of us become manipulated and controlled by people in our life. We become subject to their agendas. We become a part of their plan. We get sucked into their vortex. And slowly but surely, if we're not aware, if we're not conscious, all of a sudden we can be completely pulled off of the path of our own unfolding and participating in a plan that really isn't for us. That's when one day you wake up and you realize, holy shit, where have I gone wrong? What am I doing? Why am I working in this industry? Why is this person my business partner? Why is this person my spouse? Why is everything happening to me in this way? And you begin to realize that you've just been sucked in for so long by someone else's energy. And what you need to begin to step into the truth of is your energetic autonomy. Because people take advantage of you and control you and manipulate you because that is the energy that you are showing that it's okay to do that to you. That it's okay to speak to you in this way, to give you these tasks, to do these things. And your energy, even if it's non-verbal, even if it's just your presence, the way you carry yourself, the way you look into the eyes of another person, the way you sit in a meeting, all of these things are indicators to people for how much or how little they can take advantage of you. And you need to begin to step into the truth of your own personal energy, your own personal autonomy, and begin to define for yourself what is acceptable and unacceptable for engagement with other energy types? Because every single one of us engages in life. We engage with other people, we engage with environments, we engage with the ego in our head. And if we don't know who we are, our true self, that authentic real being deep beneath, we will be dictated by the ego of the mind that's functioning out of scarcity and fear, we will be dictated by the employee or the business partner or whoever it might be, some controlling, manipulative friend to do whatever it is that they have, whatever agendas and schemes and vortexes that they exist in, you'll be pulled into that. Or environments, you keep going to the same places over and over, yeah, you're going to be a product of that. You're going to be a product of going to the bars all the time or whatever it might be. Yeah, you are going to be that energy if you pattern yourself, allow yourself to unconsciously be patterned to that frequency, to that environment. And so the way that you begin to transcend ego, the way that you begin to transcend the relationships, whether they're romantic or business or friends or whatever, or whether you begin to transcend the environment, how you transcend the environment is by awakening to who you are deep beneath under all of the conditioning, the authentic true self and embodying that energy unapologetically. And as you begin to go deep within and embody that energy of the true self, your real opinion, your real divine design, your real callings and missions that the God of the universe has invited you to participate by your incarnation, when you begin to become clear on that and begin to activate that, begin to integrate that, begin to step out in courage and faith as you walk into that, it might cause some abrasion around you, it might cause some friction around you. First, it's going to cause friction within with your ego. Your ego is going to be like, wait a second, I thought I was in charge around here. But you can't kill your ego. You can't lock your ego up in a box somewhere or put it on a chain out in the yard or else it's just going to get more aggressive. You have a loving conversation with your ego. You extend grace to your ego and you say, listen, I know that this has been your role for so long, but we have a better position for you and you begin to integrate your ego in areas that you can utilize your ego for good, but it has limitations, rules, and boundaries that your true self will begin to place on the ego, and it will begin to quiet the ego whenever it's speaking and it shouldn't be. And so you'll begin to transcend that within, and then all of a sudden you'll begin to have these engagements and interactions with, again, business partners, bosses, coworkers, your spouse, your friends, your parents, whoever, 
that is more embodied because your true self overriding ego is beginning to express itself in the world, engaging other energy fields. And now that energy field is saying, wait a second, just like how the ego did. Wait a second. I thought you were in this box. I thought you were like this and it's going to be subconscious. People aren't going to be able to really consciously put their head around that at first, usually, but you begin to step into the truth of who you are and people will subconsciously, unconsciously, their, their boxes and their, you know, where they fit in the matrix of their mind, you will begin to be ruffling that and upsetting that flow and that system and that programming within them. And some people may get confrontational with you. They may get frustrated with you. They may have um, lashing out of anger of uh, unconsciously, just because it's like you are embodying truthfully with confidence who you really are. And that's confronting to the narrative that they have for you. Some people will just exit out of your life. Some people will confront you. You might have to have some difficult conversations but you begin to transcend all of the things exterior from you in that relationship, that energy that is not yours, it's theirs, that's projecting onto you. You begin to transcend that and lovingly, just like how you lovingly integrated the ego, you lovingly just confidently embody who you are, but you just lovingly give that energy back to them. That's theirs. If they can't place you in their mind, that's theirs to figure out. If this job doesn't work anymore because now you're stepping into what you really give a shit about, well, then either they'll fire you or better yet, you just leave yourself because you realize there's something better for me that's more in tune with who I am and that you don't have to put up with anybody you don't want to, including that nagging, annoying boss who keeps lording their imaginary control over you. You don't have to do that. You begin to excavate that true self and that ego stops talking. What are we going to do about money? And no, 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 no. You begin to say, ah, I trust in the goodness of God and the beauty of life. And you have those interfaces and interactions with your boss or your coworkers or your spouse or your parents or your children or whoever it is. But you begin to choose to live at peace with all people, but not sacrifice who you are in doing so. And then your environment begins to transform and change. The places that you go to where people expect you to go to, you no longer go anymore. People expect you to do you at the happy hour for too many margaritas every Friday. You don't do that anymore. People expected you to go to these places and to participate in these events. You don't do those any longer. Or you begin to do certain things. They begin to see you more around at the yoga studio. They begin to see you more at the nonprofit coffee shop because you have changed your values to see that it's important to give back to society. Whatever it might be, your environment around you and how you interface with all of life begins to change and morph to come in tune with your true self. Because when you embody the truth of your authentic self, everything within and around transforms and patterns to its energy frequency. And so often when we are unaware or unconscious of who we really are, our ego spends its time patterning and creating itself in tune with exterior things, exterior programming, exterior condi conditioning, exterior fear, right? Not going to have enough, not going to be able to be seen as such, going to lose my status not going to be able to be friends with them. The only way I'm going to find a partner is if I go to this bar, <laughs> your ego will trick you into some far out things. But again, when you begin to understand the energy and the confidence and the expression of who you are underneath of that, and you assign the ego its proper role in your life, and you assign all of the people in your life, their proper place in your heart, that you aren't moved or shaken or disrupted or disturbed or distorted by their opinion, by their uh, thought for you, by the box they want to create and keep you in. They have no option but to shift and mold and adapt and adopt around who you are. 
And sometimes people won't flow in harmony with you anymore. That's okay. Bless them and move on. Because you have a duty to embody your true self, not a duty to please everyone around you. You have a duty to unfold into the truth of your incarnation, not simply survive in scarcity. Your soul has taken on this body for a purpose. Become aware of it. Choose to live into it unapologetically. And if that creates some abrasion and that creates some friction around you, that's just because things are moving energetically to form to the true authentic you. Hmm. And over time, as you begin to become more comfortable, more confident, more calm in who you are, and you consistently begin to show up with that energy every day, your ego, your friendships, your relationships, your environment, all of it will begin to shift and change in tune with who you really are. Now, you're tapping into the fullness of life. Now, abundance is awakening. Now, you're able to do and be all that you are to do and to be. Grace and peace, my friends.